Welcome to the Travel Squad Podcast. We adventure the world together one passport stamp at a time. We're here to share travel news, tips, and our own adventures with you. Every Travel Tuesday, we share stories on a variety of topics, including our hometown San Diego, hiking, weekenders, national parks, international getaways, and inspiring you to go on your own adventures, even if it starts with your own backyard. I'm Jamal. Brittany. And I'm Kim. And And we're we're the the Travel Travel Squad Squad Podcast. Podcast. So grab your ticket and your passport. And don't forget your travel insurance. And prepare for takeoff. Hello, fellow travelers. Hey, Hey, squads. Welcome to episode 95 of the Travel Squad podcast. Today, we're going to talk to you all about the top 15 essential hiking items you need in your pack for you guys. As you guys know, we're really big hikers here at the Travel Squad Podcast, and so we want to share some of that general information with you guys, although I do want to give you a preemptive heads up. We don't necessarily mean that you need all 15 of these items every time you go. Depends on the situation, but these are essential top 15 for you guys. There are definitely some things that are worth investing in when you're going to be stomping around out there on the trails. And take it from me, I've roughed it many times, like hiking the Narrows and Water Shoes or the San Diego hike we recently just did where we're bouldering up the mountain and I'm carrying a plastic water bottle in my hands. But I have definitely learned that a good backpack with a good water supply, proper hiking boots with good grip can be a major lifesaver when you're out there in the wilderness. Absolutely. And I love to hike so much that I can plan entire vacations or entire weekend getaways just to get in some good hikes. And having the right hiking products is just really essential for a successful trip. And I really can't wait to share some of those favorite hiking products with you all. So let's dive right in. Britt, we know that you can plan trips around hiking. We have been dragged on these trips. Well, you know what? (laughs) No one else was dragged but you because after you turned 30, (laughs) you've really gone downhill with your hiking abilities. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, but, but this gear helps, definitely. The gear definitely helps. But before we get into the gear, let's start off the episode like we usually do with some tips, tips, tips. Gotta have those tips. Tips first. First tip, Brittany loves... I love downloading offline maps. It's super helpful. A lot of the times when you go hiking, you're going into remote places. I love to hike out in the wilderness where you can't get a cell signal. And so downloading those offline maps helps you stay oriented, helps you get there safely. And it just is a lifesaver, really. The All Trails app is another one that's really good. And a good tip is to screenshot the map of the trail before you go, because when you're out there, you want to have a picture of what your route is supposed to look like. Yeah. And I've really tinkered with the idea about buying the pro version. I haven't yet, but I may invest in that because with the pro version, you can download the map. So you don't have to take the screenshots and you can Mm. like actually get into the app more. So another feature of the all trails app is if you look up a specific hike, they sometimes have waypoints listed. And so on the map trail, there might be like numbers one through seven. And it'll say like at one, you're going to cross a bridge at two, you're going to veer right. And so it kind of gives you little directions. And so sometimes they take screenshots of those as well. Those directions are essential because sometimes when you're out on the trail, you can get lost. We know we've been lost (laughs) and uh, created a 16 mile hike out of that. But if you don't step up to the upgraded version of the all trails app, another really good app for you guys to have is going to be the run keeper app. And so as Kim was saying earlier, you can screenshot it through all trails run keeper. What this app does is it tracks your time. It tracks your mileage and it actually tracks your GPS location to give you really the outline shape of where you been moving so you can actually then at that point compare it to the all trails app or any picture of the trail that you take at the start of the trail with the headboards or whatever they call them the signage there that has the outline of it so it's really good to keep you oriented so run keeper is essential i also really like the drill sergeant voice cheering you on as you've done every quarter mile keeping you going oh yeah that's one of my favorite things about the app is you can change the the voice in which the person talks to you it could be soft it could be gentle it could be loud it could be the drill sergeant so the drill sergeant as we heard kim needs the motivation these days after 30 so (laughs) you know that's why it comes in clutch for her what motivates me is after the hike seeing the mileage that we did and i'm like okay that was worth it that was a workout 
I thought there was going to be the after hike beers. That's one of my favorite things about hiking as the squad is the after hike beers. It's oh, always yeah. enjoyable. Pack it in your collapsible cooler that we'll link in this episode. Love the collapsible cooler. So in the past, Kim you used to say like, if it's not six miles plus, it's not even worth doing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I feel like your attitude's changed a little bit now. That's why she needs the drill sergeant. Keep her motivated. (laughs) And another final tip here for you guys is bring sunscreen with you. I guess this could have been one of the things to have in your pack, but it is a good tip. The reason being is it doesn't matter if it's summer, doesn't matter if it's winter. You can be sun exposed and sunscreen is essential. We know I burn. I know everybody else. Maybe they can get a nice base and get a tan, but you still do want that sunscreen. So be sure to put that on before your hike. All right. So product number one is a hiking backpack. And I love my hiking backpack. I've actually had it for probably close to 10 years now. I still say it has a few more good years left in it, (laughs) (laughs) even though like it's kind of coming apart in some areas. But if you buy a good one, it's going to last a long time. And look for one that has a clip or Velcro straps to attach in a water bladder, because that is essential, especially while you're hiking. Yeah, one of my biggest pet peeves early on in our hiking days before we invested in a hiking backpack was just having a regular backpack or if I didn't bring one carrying a water bottle and if you have the backpack without the water bladder, then you got to reach into the side, pull out the water bottle, take off the lid, put it on. I mean, it sounds silly, but it's cumbersome, especially when you're hiking. And so I don't think people who don't have hiking backpacks really understand how clutch they are with the water bladders that can go in it. The backpacks, they're designed to really be strapped around your back in a certain way to make it a lot more comfortable than a regular backpack. So the hiking backpack really goes a long way to enhance your entire experience, no doubt. The straps are my favorite thing about the hiking backpacks because you can strap it across your chest. There's also one of mine that's down lower. For the waist, yeah. And it takes that pressure off of your shoulders when you're doing those 16-mile hikes. It's amazing. Yeah. And then at the lower end of the back where it has those straps, like I said, it's like really fitted to really hug you in a certain way too. That makes it a lot more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And there's cute ones out there now. You don't have to get these like hardcore hiker looking backpacks either. So we talked a little bit about the water bladder too, which is our product number two. And, you know, you really want to stay hydrated. Always bring more water than recommended on a trail. There's nothing worse than running out of water. I have definitely ran out of water on an 11 mile hike and I was miserable till the end. So get one that holds at least two liters. You're not going to regret that. Do you guys remember when we did the Hollywood sign hike in LA? Oh, yes. (laughs) And I brought an ex-boyfriend of mine who just thought he was uh, superhuman and didn't need water. He was like, what what did he say? I can't believe it. I don't remember what he said, but he only brought like a 12 ounce water bottle for the hike. And if anybody has ever hiked the Hollywood sign in Los Angeles, you know, it's sun. Yeah, it's sun exposed. There's absolutely (laughs) no shade. It was was definitely hot that day, too. And I'm just like, how is he doing this? You know, Brittany still thinks I'm being over dramatic, but I'm telling you what, when we were at the end of the hike and I really fell as we were trying to like (laughs) run our bums down the hill or whatever we were because it was so long the other way and I slipped and fell, I really almost did when I stood back up, pass out from heat exhaustion and heat stroke, I'm telling you. So I don't think I had my water bladder back then because that was way, way back in the day, even before Brittany and I were married. So I upgraded since then, but definitely wasn't enough. So you want that water bladder. Mm -hmm. And you definitely want one that has a hose that has like the open twist, like the on and off valve so it doesn't drip on you. And um, I used to have one that didn't have that and I bit it because you had to like bite down on it to suck out the water. And I think I bit it too hard once, so it just like constantly dripped for a while. So I got a new one. It has the on off valve amazing it also came with a cleaning kit so you can take one of those bottle cleaner things down the straw and just like clean that out really well so I love that and I I think it's a really good investment that one is perfect and by the way we're going to link to Amazon where you can buy all of these products in the show notes and we actually have a page on our website with links to all this stuff too so if you guys are interested in upgrading your water bladder you can go to our website and find it Yeah, absolutely. And please do utilize the links, whether it be on our website or in the show notes. If you love the content and you love our banter that you hear here on the Travel Squad podcast, when you click those links, it definitely helps support us so we can bring you better content. So please do that. 
Cool. And the third product on our list is something that comes in handy when you're doing these wild hikes that Brittany likes to do. And that is gloves with grip. Well, I was thinking of this one with gloves as a twofer because yes, Brittany pulls us on some crazy ass hikes where she wants to (laughs) utilize chains and ropes that people have attached to trees that aren't even part of the trail. (laughs) So you definitely do need the gloves with the grip, but at the same time, it could be very cold depending on where you're going. So you do want gloves to keep your hands warm too, Mm -hmm. depending on where you're going and what type of year. So it's kind of like a double combination of gloves that you definitely need. It's a twofer. I used Brittany's gloves when we went recently and did a hike in Zion. It definitely wasn't cold, but there are these crazy chains at the end of it. And I was freaking out, not wanting to fall off of the steep, sudden drop of a cliff on the other side of the tiny trail. So those those gloves really came in handy. I used them up in Washington when we went on the Mount Storm King hike. and we Another had crazy hike. Another crazy hike where you had to rappel up these ropes and rappel down and they were tied to these trees. And by the end of the hike, I had lost so much of the grip because I was just going down the rope so fast and it was like giving the gloves like rope burn. But definitely came in handy because I wouldn't want that to happen to my hands. I was going to say, imagine if it happened to your hands and then you had to go down the the rope and rappel down it with torn up hands with rope burn on it. That would be ridiculous. And just by the way, as I was kind of saying earlier, that hike that Brittany just mentioned, they had a sign at the end of it that said end of maintained trail. This is in a national park. So then people at the end of that trail tied those ropes to trees Mm -hmm. and they had signs that said continue at your own risk really to the top. They were so. You, mm. <laughs> well, it was definitely uh, an interesting hike, to say the least. Fun, no doubt. You want to hear about it, go listen to our episode on Olympic National Park. We mentioned it in their great episode. Another thing, number four, that you're going to want to bring in your backpack is a hat. I actually have a hiking hat that I keep in my pack that I don't even wear in my normal life. But a ball cap is really good for this or bucket hats are super in fashion right now. And they come in tons of different styles to match your hiking gear. And I would highly recommend that. And Jamal, you were actually talking about a cooling hat. Yeah. So right now I just have my baseball cap. I rep my Giants all day, every day when we're on the hikes. I do need a new hat for my everyday life and going to keep my Giants cap now as my regular hiking one. I need it because I burn rather easily. Sunscreen, even though it helps. The hat is even more, but going back to the cooling hat. Yeah, I've been seeing this. I really want to invest in it. Basically, you just put that hat in water. It's made out of a special type of material, and it's supposed to really cool you off as you're wearing it. The way the water's in the hat and it evaporates off of you and your skin. So I forgot what the name of the brand is called, but I really want to invest in that. And I think it would be clutch, especially to go hiking on a lot more warmer days than not. Number five, we're going to keep up the trend here of Jamal sunburning. See, you know what? (laughs) We were ragging on you, Kim, earlier, and now you guys are just ragging on me and my fair, sensitive skin. Yeah, number five, we need a buff. The only buff I really want to wear, by the way, if CBS Casting for Survivor is listening, this is the only buff I want to wear. I have a buff (laughs) now. I always bring it on my hiking trips, and I know it's counterintuitive to put this on the list when I really don't wear it when I hike, but you should wear a buff to protect your neck and your head when you're hiking also. But Survivor, give me that one for CBS. Jeff Probst, I'm waiting for you, buddy. (laughs) It can also double as a face mask. You know, a lot of these national parks, they're federal land. They still have mask mandates in the stores and in the transportation. So if you're in a situation where you need to mask up, there you go. Perfect. And there's a lot of trendy buffs. Like you can get them in all sorts of different colors, match your hiking outfit. You can look like you're really in style. A really good thing to use the buff is, like I said, I always really bring it. I think only one time I've really used it kind of for my neck. I think I just really have the wrong size. So it bunches up and feels awkward is really more so why I don't use it. But one time we were hiking and I was really sun exposed on one side and I was wearing short sleeves and I could feel the sun just burning my skin, even though I put on more sunscreen on my arm. So I took my buff because it's rather long and put it on my arm so it's adaptable too. like if you're on one side and the sun's hitting you you have short sleeves you can use that as like a long sleeve it's really really helpful too so it's it's like a twofer with it yeah i can really see you also if it's sunny and you're driving can roll the window down a little bit stuff it up there and block the sun you can get a really good nap in the back seat (laughs) (laughs) that's what you're thinking about huh (laughs) So number six on our list is wool socks. And man, wool socks are a game changer. You know, I used to hike in like 
just regular athletic socks, everyday socks. But wool socks, they're plushy, they're more comfortable. They also wick away all of the sweat. And so it helps to prevent getting blisters and it also helps regulate your temperature, your body temperature. Which to me seems counterintuitive. Wool socks keeps you cool. And I actually do not own a pair of wool socks. I hike in angle socks still or double sock. And every time we go hiking, you're like, just bring some wool socks. You'll be fine. I'm like, okay. (laughs) But I don't have any. Well, now that you have your Costco membership, Kim, go to Costco. They have a great selection of wool socks. Actually, that's where all my wool socks are from. I don't even buy specific like hiking wool socks. I have mine from Costco. But they're really good, especially like even during the summer. It's counterintuitive, right? You think wool, it's supposed to be warm. But it is a really good material to water wick away moisture like Brittany was saying but just imagine if you're going on a hiking trail and that trail has you going across a creek bed or even like up to shin ankle high of water and when you get out it's really going to help your foot stay a bit more dry and not be super moist and then get you know I I don't want to use trench foot because that's going to take a lot of time but really wet to where it tears up your foot what is trench foot uh, just look at world war one trench foot it's no good but I mean that involves you having (laughs) uh, wet socks and stuff like that for an extended extended period of time that won't happen to you here during hiking camp (laughs) Yeah, like Jamal said, if you cross a creek and your feet get wet and you're wearing wool socks, they won't feel like as soggy as it would if you're wearing like just regular cotton socks. When we went whitewater rafting in West Virginia on the river, I wore tennis shoes with the wool socks. And that's what they recommend if you're not wearing like water shoes of some sort, because it'll help keep you warm and it'll help wick away that water from your feet so you won't get cold or hypothermia on the river. Even without the water, I want to say if you're wearing hiking boots, the extra wool layer really makes it a lot more comfortable in the boot too. So even just regular hiking, if you know you're not going to be in water crossing anything, solid choice. Yeah, I wear them for every single hike. I get blisters all the time too. No wool socks for you, Kim. That's why. (laughs) I know what I'm getting you this year for Christmas. (laughs) If I don't get them before then, hopefully I will get them before our next hike. All right, so number seven moving along here is going to be hiking poles. Now, hiking poles are super essential. They saved all of us when we did the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu, but even everyday hikes, hiking poles are clutch. I didn't really know the proper way to use hiking poles until that hike. And there's a certain height you put them at when you're going uphill, and there's a different height that you put them at when you're going downhill. And my God, if you're going to be going up and down really steep hikes, hiking poles will change the game. Yeah, and they help protect your knees as well. Um, A lot of people complain of knee pain when they're going downhill. And so the hiking pole helps distribute the weight and helps when you're going down steep sections. And it can also be really good for balance. Example, like if you were going to Zion and you were going in the Narrows, you could probably bring your hiking poles as a balance. There were a lot of people using hiking poles in that creek. Well, they're needed. You're walking through the riverbed with rocks underneath, boulders, and you can't really see. So it really helps with your balance. But even normal hikes, I mean, they are clutch. I mean, going back to what Brittany was saying, I remember I always used to, when I was younger, want to go downhill because obviously it's like, fuck, I just want to be done with up, go down. But now that I'm older, I really dread the downhill because like Brittany said, it does hurt my knees. So on the times that I forget my hiking poles or I think, oh, you know, this hike shouldn't be too bad. I just don't bring them this time and I don't have them. My knees always end up hurting. So they are a clutch to save you, give you stamina going up and they definitely save your joints and knees as you are going down. My God, from the way we sound in this episode, we're going to be podcasting about senior travel before long. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, man, I'm telling you, once I hit 30, I mean, I haven't gotten to the level you've gotten at, Kim, where (laughs) you just can't handle hikes no more. But I do feel it in my body, but I'm still trooping on. So I got that going for me, at least. (laughs) And you can buy hiking poles that collapse down to literally so small that you can put them in a side pocket of a backpack or put them inside your luggage. However, I did read that you're not really supposed to put them in carry-on luggage, which I found was really interesting. Why is that? Something about like 
the tubes can potentially be carriers of other items. Mm. And so like if the hiking poles aren't true tubes, then they might say like, we don't know what's inside of here. And they might say, no, you can't carry it on. But there's no official rule. So it's kind of up to TSA. Interesting. And if you do get them through TSA, that can end up saving you a lot of money if you go somewhere on a hike and you don't have to rent poles when you're there. Hey travelers, let's take a quick detour to talk all about our travel itineraries that we've created just for you. We now have six different trip itineraries, one week in Kauai, an American Southwest weekend or road trip, a week in Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks, a road trip adventure featuring all three of Washington State's national parks, Big Island, Hawaii, and an Arizona road trip that features all three of Arizona's national parks. We are obsessed with these. These itineraries are 20 to 30 page PDF guides with every detail of the trip laid out. We're talking where to fly into, the exact route to take, where to stay, park entrance prices, where to eat, and driving distance between attractions, plus what things to see and do, even the hikes we recommend, and their mileage, and the time to allow for each one, and so much more. We have story highlights on our Instagram, at Travel Squad Podcast, where you can see the full guides. We've done all of the research and have taken these exact trips, taking our all of the guesswork from the planning so all that you have to do is show up and have fun purchase your comprehensive travel squad podcast itinerary on our website at travel best of all they're on sale right now for 30 dollars. so travel on over and get yours today we want to thank our sponsor manscaped which is the best in men's below the waist grooming champion of the world manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join the over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code Travel Squad at manscaped.com. I've been manscaping before Manscaped was even a product. And I can tell you this from all my times from puberty until now, since I've gotten my hands on the Lawnmower 4.0 and be one of the first men in America, let alone the world, to try this product, nothing has been better for me in my manscaping regimen. Imagine a sleek, well designed, optimized trimmer that makes shaving the most enjoyable part of your bathroom experience. The Lawnmower 4.0 features a cutting edge ceramic blade due to its skin safe technology. It also has multiple guard lengths, a spotlight to guide your shave, and wireless charging capabilities. It is even waterproof, so you can take this bad boy with you into the shower. No worries about getting electric shock or nicks on your family jewels whatsoever with this product. I know my balls have thanked me, and your balls will thank you. And so will the ladies in your life. Get 20% off and free shipping with code travel squad at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code travel squad. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with manscaped. All right. Number eight on the list, standard hiking item that I think if you're going to invest in anything, this should be number one. And that is hiking boots. You want to have something that's going to give you ankle support and grip because there's nothing worse than hiking downhill, slipping on rocks and falling on your ass. Have I done that before? Maybe, maybe a time or two. I definitely (laughs) have. But yeah, the grip is so important. I think that's one of the most important things. And then all, you know, obviously the ankle support as well, but you're constantly while you're hiking, I always like trip over rocks and stuff. So I feel, feel like in regular shoes, I would stub my toe and these really just give that extra layer of protection and they're really comfortable. You know, when I wear hiking boots and I stub my toe or do anything else, I always think to myself, people that actually have some blue collar jobs that have their steel toe boots and you wonder why they're essential. You go on a hiking trip and you have your hiking boots on and you hit your toe on a rock and you realize, man, if I actually just had like sneakers on or something else, I'd be screwed right now. That is exactly why they are very, very important. And a lot of times, even, you know, the best hiker, you're going to lose your balance. If you don't have the ankle support, you can twist your ankle in a wrong way. I feel like so many times my boots have really saved me from a more serious injury by just having them. And they are very, very essential. Kim said, maybe this should be number one. I would agree with her that and backpack. That's why we kind of put it number one, but any one of these two are your for sure must haves. And get some that are water resistant or waterproof, especially if you're hiking in the snow or in the rain or just in colder weather in general and rainy weather. 
yeah, they'll definitely keep your foot a lot warmer in uh, cold weather than anything. So that's always good too. So you know us, Travel Squad Podcast. We have to tell you about the bathrooms. Always got to be bathroom talk. <laughs> and we have a motto. Anytime we go on a trip, anytime we go on a hike, we put hands in, NSOT on three. And what does that stand for? No, no shits, shits on, on the, the trail. trail. <laughs> but... Sometimes it happens. Brittany <laughs> has an experience with that, I think, right? No, I do not. <laughs> Jamal, is there something you want to share with the group? <laughs> All I'll say is it's in a previous episode. I'm not going to mention which one. Go find it. And maybe you'll get lucky <laughs> if you want to hear about it. But it happens. Mother Nature calls <laughs> when we least expect it. And so number nine here, biodegradable bags. And we're not saying like a dog to pick up your poop and carry it out. I think it's okay to leave that depending on the hike. It is biodegradable itself. But what we are saying is to pack out any teepee that you use. You can also use these biodegradable bags for trash, for banana peels or fruit cores. Yeah, I always use them for snacks and put all of the fruit cores in there. But I love them because they also smell good too. They're like lavender scented and biodegradable, (laughs) which is nice. And while you're hiking the trails in the last year, so many more people have been on trails, been out in nature, and everyone has to pee. Everyone has to poop. We get it. But don't leave your nasty TP around the tree so everyone knows that you marked your spot. (laughs) Carry it out with you. Yeah. And these biodegradable bags that we're talking about, funny enough, I don't even know if they're truly a hiking product. These are biodegradable bags that they sell like in pet stores and online for pets, really for you to pick up your dog's waste. And they are biodegradable. So these are really, really solid bags. They're definitely really good. So do carry that. And moving on into number 10, I mean, keeping with the theme shiwi what is the shiwi ladies that's an essential maybe not for the men but for the ladies out here this one's for the girls this one makes it really easy to pee as a female if you are on a hike so you don't have to squat down you don't have to get poison ivy all over your ass i remember one time did this hike in san diego the ho chi minh trail and i had to pee really bad and i pulled my pants down did not have a shiwi and my ass got so scraped up by something (laughs) it literally looked like i got whipped all over my ass that's That's just an excuse it probably did get (laughs) (laughs) no i wish it did (laughs) But the shiwi would have been nice because I could have just standed there, did my business, boom, boom, boom. Also really good for road trips. Well, I know you said it's for women to stand, but why doesn't someone just, without getting too graphic, explain what it is and how it's used? It's like a female urinal. Basically, it shapes your vagina and you put it up there. It has a funnel and you take a pee and it squirts it out away from your body. (laughs) Um, So like you are standing like a man and pissing. That sounds essential for a woman. It's great for camping, hiking, backpacking, anything really. You bought your Shiwi when we went on the Inca Trail, didn't you, Brittany? I did, yeah. They're super cheap too. Yeah, they're just a few dollars. Mine's purple. It's really nice and pretty. So We just had an episode with travel stamps and Erica had mentioned that this was her number one recommended thing. Yeah, absolutely. If you haven't tried it, recommend trying it. So number 11 is electrolyte tablets. And these are really important to have on the trail because again, hydration is really important. And if you're on a really long trail or if you're backpacking, they're essential to have. They come in a lots of different flavors, usually in tablets, and you just stick them in some water, they dissolve, and they give you a lot of electrolytes to keep you hydrated. I think Kim discovered this as her hangover remedy, was it not? And then it just morphed into us using it for hiking, quite honestly. I have discovered the ultimate hangover cure, but I'll save that for another episode. In fact, if you guys want to know, why don't you just comment on our latest Instagram? I'll let you know. But yes, so I didn't use electrolyte tablets. I used liquid IV, which is essentially the same thing in powder form. And so they're better than water because when you pour them into your water, they actually multiply the hydration output that you get from it. So drinking one bottle of water with an electrolyte tablet actually is three bottles of water. That's amazing. Someone's going to have to explain to me how that science works. I believe it. But at the same time, that's crazy. Just the concept. Yeah. And they're good for hiking. But if you're also traveling, like going on a flight to do this hike, you're going to want it for that. Flying is dehydrating, being out in the sun. They're just all around great and for hangovers. Yeah, so definitely hear them all year round, but make sure to have them, especially in summer, because you're prone to sweating, you're prone to losing electrolytes, but they're good any of the time. And if you're feeling like muscle cramps or fatigue, that's another good time to have them. 
All right, guys, so moving on to number 12, we're going to talk a little bit here about some crampons. Somebody tell us what a crampon is, because there was one time we all went on a hike, us three, and we could not complete the hike because we did not have the crampons. Not to be confused with tampons, but these are... Ironically, they have the word cramp in it, too, though. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a great name for tampons. <laughs> crampons. But it's kind of like this slip thing that goes over your shoe. Think about chains that go on your tires when it's snowing. It's the same kind of an idea for your shoe that's really good for when it's icy and snowing and you need that extra grip. Yeah, and with that same analogy, almost think of it as like addable cleats to your shoes too, right? You know, we have exactly. cleats for sporting activities, but these are cleats that you can add on. So I like the analogy there with the the chains for tires. That's kind of what shoes. they look yeah. like too. Absolutely. Yeah, so we went to Zion National Park and we were going to do the chain section. But again, like Kim said earlier, it's on a steep cliff. It was snowy. It was icy. And we did not have crampons. So we did not feel like it was safe enough to complete that hike. The chain section of Angel's Landing, mind you, by the way. And even before we got to the chain section, you know, if you have a misstep on a normal day, even when it's sunny, you can literally fall a sheer 1,000 feet off the edge and die. People die often on that. I don't want to say like every day often, but, you know, they have a sign that says so many people since the year 2000 have passed. I think it's somewhere like around 20. So it happens. But before we got to the chains, we were slipping on the switchbacks that they mm -hmm. had there because it was super, super icy. And an Another time Steve recently, too. Brittany and I were in Colorado. We went to Great Sand Dunes National Park. And just outside the National Park, they have a waterfall called Zapata Falls. And that waterfall freezes inside of a cave. It and, was amazing. And really, really cool. Yeah. But when you get to there... Obviously, the creek itself is frozen inside the cave. The waterfall also, you want to try to get close and get to the waterfall for the awesome photo. And we did not have our crampons with us because, I mean, we were going to a sand duned national park. We've in just, the desert. Yeah, and we just found out, like, in the desert, in the mountains at the high up, they actually have this. And we just kept slipping. We kept falling. So cr crampons are essential when you know you're going to be in ice. I literally ate shit while we were trying to get close to the waterfall. Like, you could hear me just, like... Oh, I didn't know if it was the echo from being in the cave or if Brittany really bopped her head and her shoulder really, really hard. I think it was a combination of both. <laughs> but I was like, oh, my God, like I really thought she was for sure, for sure injured. So you need those crampons when we know we're going to be in the snow. We do bring them except for that one time in Zion. Now, I mean, that was the learning lesson, but we had no clue of this other one, Zapata Falls here. So that one we were unprepared, unfortunately, but crampons essential. So moving on to number 13, we have listed a first aid safety kit because the nurse in me wants y'all to be safe. I was going to say, leave it to the nurse. <laughs> you have to have your bandages, your moleskin. They have lots of awesome things in there like antibiotic ointment, gauze, tape, whistle, compass. You could put a lot of stuff in a first aid safety kit. So very recently I found out what moleskin was, but for the novice hiker, or maybe somebody who doesn't know, tell us what the moleskin is that comes in this first aid kit. Or if you're not buying a comprehensive first aid kit, what you should put in it. With I'm that. glad you asked that because I also didn't know until Charlotte brought it on a trip we took with her like last year. And it honestly deserves its own spot on this list. <laughs> but we're putting in the first aid kit. But yes, I agree with you on that, Kim. Tell us what it is. They're similar to Band-Aids, if you're thinking about what they do, but it's kind of like nude colored, sticky, like if, whatever that material is on the outside of a Band-Aid, it's kind of the same thing, but it's very sticky, sticks to your skin, like skin, like mole skin, and it prevents you from getting blisters when you're hiking, and it really, really works. Yeah, so if you feel like you have a blister coming on, cut a piece to that area, and then put your sock on and hike, and you won't get a blister in that area. It's amazing. Band-Aids also work, but they don't stick as well. Moleskin is like truly your skin. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the name, but nonetheless, you know, the first aid kit is extremely essential. You always want to have some sort of like aspirin, ibuprofen, all the other stuff that was mentioned there. I mean, realistically, as safe as hiking is, it is also very dangerous in a way, depending on what you're doing. I mean, with any daily activity, anything could happen. But if you're out in a remote area, you for sure want a first aid kit, no doubt. 
and we'll link a first aid kit. I actually bought one recently and it came with a travel size one that you can hook on to your like your hiking backpack. And then it had a full size one for your home or your car. And so as you run out of supplies in your travel one, you could just pull from the large, more comprehensive first aid kit. It even has a tiny folded up heated blanket. That's exactly what I was going to say. It even has like the heated blankets that they give uh, like marathon runners or people or astronauts when they come back to Earth from the space station. You know, those little foil blankets that are really like heat warming. So if you get lost out there too and need some warmth, first aid kit's going to have your warm blanket for you that's uh, as light as foil. Quite awesome. Which is funny because number 14 on here, pocket blanket. I love little things. I love to take trips where I put two weeks of clothes and supplies into a carry-on. And this pocket blanket is amazing. It's a full-size blanket that folds up to the tiny size of your palm. So when you're on hikes and say you want to get to the peak and enjoy your lunch at this beautiful overlook, you can pull that out, lay it out, have your lunch, and then fold it back up into the tiny little palm-sized thing that it is and stuff it back in your backpack. And the one that we have linked is actually waterproof as well. So you can lay it down anywhere. You can lay it down at the top of a peak near a lake. You can put it in the sand and it's waterproof and it's made for the outdoors, really. It's perfect. There's so many times you get to the place you want to have your lunch. You're like, okay, I guess we'll just post up on this rock. But throwing down a little blanket, class it up a bit. (laughs) I know. I'm always thinking about our packed lunches and how much nicer it is to sit on something a little bit more comfortable. Like even if it's not a flat and smooth surface, it's still better than sitting straight up on a rock. It's great. Perfect. So we've made it to number 15 on our list and we have listed a headlamp. We have done some hikes together where we have to get on our hands and knees and crawl through these tiny slot canyon spaces. And the headlamp is clutch for that. You can use your phone's light, you can use a flashlight, but having it on your head so you can use your hands is perfect. Yeah, when we were in Hawaii, there were some caves that we went to or lava tubes. And so they recommend having a flashlight or a headlamp. And it's really nice to have it because you can move around and your hands are free, especially if you're climbing down into a cave. You don't want to hold on to a flashlight. You want your hands to be free and accessible. It's also good for night hikes. Louie and I did a a night hike once and it was really scary, but we had headlamps (laughs) and it lit the way even for sunrise hikes too, because sometimes you get there super Mm -hmm. early and you want to get to the top of the peak before sunrise so you can be at the peak when the sun does rise. Just like when we were in Hawaii, we were on Sleeping Giant Trail. Oh, that was a beautiful sunrise, wasn't it? It was. You know, it's (laughs) funny that you mentioned that, Brittany, because I was going to jump in before you said anything and I was even going to bring that up. You know, you need them for the early morning rising hikes. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think one of you ladies had a freak out that prevented us from getting to the top before (laughs) sunrise. But the headlamps, I must say came in clutch, but not clutch enough because it didn't light up the indicator on the floor. Like it was listed as a number. Like at this point, you're supposed to split off. Somebody missed that who was leading the way. I don't know who it was. Don't remember. Don't want to throw <laughs> out names. about yourself. No, yeah. that might've been one of you ladies. You were, I don't know. You were the one that had the freak out <laughs> and you're the wrong one that led us the wrong way. You guys can go back to our Kauai episode and hear all about that. And then you'll find out who really had the freak out. Yeah, you, you definitely will. But again, the headlamp was clutch for the hiking. The problem was I was looking straight up and the sign was on the floor and uh, I missed it. So what are you going to do? But either way, you still need it when you're hiking in the jungle right before sunrise. All right, squatties, we have a special treat for you. It is time for questions of the week. Yeah. Our first question is coming in from Jeanette from Dallas, Texas. And Jeanette is asking, what has been your favorite place to hike in the world? Such a good question because there are so many good hikes in the world. So many. That's really hard to pick. Does the Great Wall of China count as a hike? I swear where they put us on that wall, it might as well have been a hike. I mean, we were climbing up steep on that. But since it was technically paved and an actual like wall, and I don't know if I'm going to put it as a hike, but uh, it was a memorable one. But uh, if we continued further, I might count it. We only went so far. (laughs) 
But quite honestly, great question, Jeanette. I'm going to have to go with Grand Tetons. I mean, we've done so many awesome hikes in national parks. I mean, you know we've done the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. I mean, that's just straight up epic. But Grand Tetons still holds a special place for me. I just was not expecting it to be so majestically beautiful. And being in the mountains out there, seeing glaciers, seeing the peaks with the wildlife, I, I'm going to put that as some of my favorite hikes that we did in Grand Tetons. We did two days in a row back to back absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, I would have to say Grand Teton National Park was just so amazing and so beautiful. I would definitely go back there and do some more hiking. But I also really loved Big Island Hawaii. I feel like it's a re more remote island. And when we went to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, we were hiking in this lush jungle and then hiking down to the volcano crater and going over that, going into lava tubes. And it was just so desolate and beautiful and eerie at the same time, but so lush and green on the outside. So that's got to be one of my favorite hikes. And then I know we're all thinking Inca Trail in Peru as well. Yes, absolutely. There's nothing more magical and nothing gets me going more than doing a hike with ancient ruins along the whole trail. What's so funny about that was Kim and I, we were hiking in San Diego quite a bit, but you know, just, you know, hikes that were like three to six miles. And then all of a sudden we got inspired and we're like, we're going to do this really crazy hike. <laughs> that's going to take us four days. We're going to have to do some camping on the trail. And we really hadn't done a lot of training for it. And we're just like, we're going to go for it. <laughs> so that was a really amazing experience. And I would highly recommend hiking the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. I'm really glad I did it before 30. Uh, I don't know, if, Kim, I don't know if you could have handled it. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I never thought about it till you said it now. I'm thinking, what would Kim at 30 be like on the Inca Trail? And I could just hear the complaining in the back. I mean, I, I should start calling you Jamal. Like you're turning into Jamal as you're getting older with the more and more. Remember when we saw the lady that had to turn back and she was riding the horse? That was devastating. That was, that was day one for us. I don't know at what day she was coming back, but we all saw that and thought to ourselves, oh, no this could be any one of us. That's Kim over 30. I know. That's probably what it was. <laughs> All right. And our second question coming in from Patricia from Charleston, South Carolina. Patricia is asking, what's your favorite hike in San Diego? Also a really tough one, but I would say that one of my favorite hikes was actually the Ho Chi Minh Trail mm -hmm. because you feel like you're going through a slot canyon as you're coming down to the beach. Yeah, that one's really nice and it could be precarious in some points. Yeah, I fell. <laughs> <laughs> you almost fell completely down the cliff. I did. You know, for me, I'm actually going to reminisce about an episode that we talked on this before and I don't remember which one it was. And I'm going to quote Kim. She liked this hike because it was quick and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Cowles Mountain, which is the tallest mountain in San Diego. And when we say that, we're talking within city limits of San Diego, obviously within the county and on the outskirts. There are obviously higher peaks. But this one is like within the city itself. And lots of people go. It gives you amazing 360 degree views. You could see to the north. You can see to the east. You could see the west and go watch the sunrise or sunset over the ocean. Look to the south. You got a beautiful view of Mexico. I absolutely love it. Great hike. Cows Mountain in San Diego. That was what I was going to say too. But I also really, really like Devil's Punch Bowl, even though I've only done it once. You've only done it once? Yeah, but it's just so cool. Like it's it's unique for compared to the other hikes here in San Diego. Well, what are they have that makes it unique so patricia knows patricia you have to get a permit first of all that's not my favorite part about it but then you hike down and you get to this beautiful waterfall sometimes it's small sometimes it's a little bigger and this huge pool of water where when it's summer you can swim in it it's just beautiful there's rocks everywhere and it's shaded down in that yes. area once you get down to the waterfall so it's a really unique hike too it's a good one but Patricia, you're obviously not from San Diego. Come to San Diego. We'll give you so many more hiking recommendations. We have a whole episode about our favorite trails in San Diego. So definitely check that out and DM us again if you want any more recommendations. And before you come, get your hiking products together, get your backpack stuffed up. And like we said, you don't need everything to get yourself going. The most important part is just getting out there and getting started and you're going to love it. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode and thank you for supporting us. If you do click on any of those links, keep the adventures going with us. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube at Travel Squad Podcast. Send us in your questions of the week too. If you found the information in this episode to be useful or if you thought we were just plain funny, please be sure to share it with a friend that would enjoy it too. And as always, guys, please subscribe 
rate and review our podcast, and tune in every Travel Tuesday for new episodes. Stay tuned for next week's episode. We have some more amazing adventures and tips in store for you. Bye, everybody. Bye.